Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh, topping our newscast. News 2 has received preliminary reports about two police officers who were found dead at Ham's Bluff Beach on Frederickstead. Now, this story is developing, and we will have more information in a later newscast. What we do know is that the two police officers, one male and one female, were found lying lifeless on the sand by two civilians. The shooting deaths most likely happened within the past 24 hours, according to police. The police commissioner and possibly Governor Kenneth Mapp were scheduled to hold a press conference at 5.30, but that was pushed back. Count on two. We will keep you updated as this story develops. Police on St. Croix are requesting the community's assistance in locating a man reported missing. Jerome Christian, 31, was last seen during the month of June at his residence located in Pleasant Valley, Christian said. And since then, no one has seen or heard anything from Jerome Christian. Mr. Christian, African-American male, stands at six feet tall, weighs 150 pounds, has black short hair, light brown complexion, brown eyes, and he was a resident of Pleasant Valley. If anyone has any information on his location or sightings, please contact 911 Officer Jacobs at 340-778-2211 or Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-8477. Meanwhile, two men wanted by the VIPD have turned themselves in. That's according to information we received from police Thursday evening. One of them is Jason A. Dickinson, Dickerson, a 32-year-old who goes by the name Jungle. He was wanted for a robbery first degree. Dickerson was born in St. Croix, frequents the town of Frederickstead and a state grove place. The other wanted man who surrendered to police was Elvis Edwards, 46-year-old black male wanted for rape in the first degree. Edwards was born in St. Thomas and currently lives on St. Croix. Virgin Islands Republicans and other news are not giving up the fight to put their candidates on the general election ballot. Not only that, they're also asking the federal government for help in making sure the elections are fair and unbiased. We spoke with VI GOP State Chairman John Candigata. News News April Night has more. VI Republicans are asking Congress to intervene in the conduct of the 2016 elections in the Virgin Islands. On Thursday, VI GOP State Chairman John Canegata sent a letter to the House Subcommittee on Indian, Insular and Alaska Native Affairs. They're accusing the Joint Election Board of rigging the system. The Democrat-controlled Joint Board of Elections is trying to rig the system to ensure that Democratic candidates in November have no competition at the ballot box. If election officials stand firm on a prior decision, Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett will be the only congressional candidate on the ballot in November. After election officials refused to recognize the GOP's convention nominees, among them congressional nominee Gordon Ackley. According to the election system, the names were submitted late and included public official nominees, which according to election officials, the GOP should not have voted on at the convention. Now their territorial committee and Ackley are suing election officials to make sure Ackley's name is on the November ballot. But there were other Republicans elected at the convention. Robert Moorhead was at the convention, but he actually, you know, filed his paperwork on time because he was because of the confusion. So it was Vincent and Elwa George over at St. Thomas. And according to Canagata, they might be fighting to get those candidates on the ballot as well. We're, we're probably going to ask them to be included also. My understanding is if we're going to get that rule for Gordon Ackley, it should include our senators also, and that would be our small slate moving forward. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. John Yob, meanwhile, has responded on social media, saying that the VI GOP's plea to Congress is, quote, the height of absolute hypocrisy, and that it's the VI GOP establishment that's corrupt and incompetent. Meanwhile, election supervisor Caroline Fox has announced an update to the unofficial results of the 2016 primary elections. Residents are urged to go to their website, www.vivote.gov, to access the new numbers. According to the elections system, all election day Democratic Party ballots for the St. Thomas St. John District have been counted. Absentee ballots received so far are also included in the updated data that's now available online. Meanwhile, the St. Croix election system started conducting an audit of three polling places on Thursday. They began at 5.30 p.m. at the election offices. 
Department of Health successfully saw patients at the Charles Howard Complex today up until 3.30 p.m. However, due to the air conditioning issues, non-essential staff were allowed to leave at 2.30 p.m. Clinical staff were committed to ensuring all scheduled appointments were seen. The Community Health Division remained open and saw their last patient at 3.30 p.m. 21 walk-ins were cared for. Walk-in services were suspended at 3.30 p.m. Now they are encouraging all those seeking walk-in service to arrive between the hours of 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the event another early dismissal is required. Technicians are due on site tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. with an expected resolution by close of business. Executive staff walk through the halls of the Charles Howard Complex addressing employees concerns and health issues. The commissioner will continue to monitor the situation and give updates. Now on Wednesday the department began experiencing technical difficulties with the AC units on St. Croix at Charles Howard and St. Thomas at the St. Thomas Immunization and Community Health Clinics located at the Roy Schneider Hospital Services were suspended early afternoon for both. The Department of Health meanwhile is holding Zika Action Days the department reports those who were confirmed lab positive had had mild reactions. There have been no hospitalizations and therefore no fatalities as a result of the virus. One pregnant woman who was confirmed lab positive gave birth to a healthy baby. In addition to all of Department of Health's free services and resources, they have increased and expanded the free vector control services. The department, in collaboration with CDC and Walgreens Pharmacy, will be hosting Zika Action Day on St. Croix on Friday, August 26th at the Christian said Fort Park and on St. Thomas, Saturday, August 27th at Walgreens, Walgreens Pharmacy location. Well, here's an update. The Virgin Islands Port Authority has identified the other victim of the recent plane crash on St. Croix. The student pilot was identified as Regine Rose Acosta, 18 years old. Acosta was with her instructor when the small plane they rented from Bulky Airlines crashed on St. Croix over the weekend. Both crash victims are reported to have suffered major injuries. They were immediately transported to the Juan Louis Hospital but had to be flown off island for more intensive treatment. Acosta is a flight enthusiast. She has been featured by various news media for her flight achievement. She made her solo flight last year and is now studying aeronautical science at Emory Riddle. No report has been released by the Port Authority on the cause of the crash. We wish them a speedy recovery. The NYPD has identified the man who climbed Trump Tower using giant suction cups yesterday. NYPD officers pulled 19-year-old Stephen Rogota of Great Falls, Virginia into the building after he reached the 21st floor. They had been trying to isolate him for nearly three hours. Rogota was taken to the hospital for a psychological evaluation. The NYPD has charged him with reckless endangerment and criminal trespassing. Police say Rogota posted a YouTube video before the climb saying he was an independent researcher and wanted to have a personal meeting with Trump. The Republican presidential candidate was not in the building at the time. Keeping our eye on the economy, Delta Airlines is once again flying at full speed. The Atlanta-based carrier canceled nearly 2,000 flights following a computer outage on Monday. Many vacations and business trips were affected by the issue. Delta is trying to ease the pain for travelers who were impacted. The carrier waived its rebooking fees and is offering $200 vouchers to those whose flights were delayed more than three hours. Here's a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers there, we can see the Dow up 117, NASDAQ up 23, S&P 500 up a 10. Coming up on News 2, our athletes are doing well at the 2016 Olympics in Brazil. We'll have more in sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The Virgin Islands Waste Management Agency is making a few changes in where residents on St. Thomas can dispose of their household trash. One of their bin sites is closing this weekend, but they also opened a new disposal area. We have more on what you need to do about the new Mandal Convenience Center. News 2's April Knight has that story.
The Peter Borg bin site on St. Thomas is closing. But I will be closing that on Sunday, mm -hmm. the 31st. But residents in the area need not worry. The newly opened Mandel Convenience Center comes to the rescue. I've heard that the people think that, it, that there's a cost. Mm -hmm. There's no cost mm -hmm. right now, so they can bring their trash. Residents can drop off trash at the convenience center just like they do in regular bin sites, except they're tossing the trash into a compactor. So I'm going to hit the start button. <laughs> Waste Management Authority crew will be there to inspect the trash and lend a hand. Each of the two compactors here at the Mandel Convenience Center can crush up to five of the 20 cubic yard bins that we see all around the island but they're limited to just household trash from residences with up to three units only. Uh, owners of, of properties with four units or more um, have to use either have their, a, a hauler, private hauler, or self-haul to the landfill. Once the compactor is full, it gets transported to the Bavoni landfill. The convenience center also collects special waste as well as hazardous household waste on a schedule that alternates weekly. We call bulk waste or special waste which would include furniture, um, you know, cabinets, couches, those type of things, mattresses, or, um, and, then, and then we also would be collecting appliances. No fee, okay. not at this time. Okay. So I don't want every, anyone to think that we won't be charging a fee eventually, but um, we will let them know when that occurs. Oils and paints, however, have to be dropped off directly at the landfill. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. In other news, Virgin Islands National Guard units, they're conducting annual training at various sites across the territory. It began in July and continues through September. The Virgin Islands community, they say, should not be alarmed during training. Noise considerations are executed. As the Guard is aware, residents may be in the vicinity of on-base and off-base locations. In addition, motorists are asked to observe safety and road rules when they encounter a group grouping of military vehicles on roadways. The convoy of large or wide vehicles may obstruct visibility if you attempt to pass. The VI National Guard apologizes for any inconvenience. However, training is required to maintain and improve proficiency. Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands, they hosted their annual awards reception to honor its donors, volunteers, and scholarship, and as well as grant recipients. The event was held at the prior Gillette courtyard at Antilles School. This year the foundation awarded a total of $100,000 in academic scholarships to 58 students. Undergraduate and graduate students will have the opportunity to attend schools such as the University of the Virgin Islands, American University and University of South Florida. CFBI scholarships range from $500 to $4,000. Scholarships such as the Isaac and Rebecca Piwanski Scholarship and the Milan and Aliki Glumich Memorial Scholars Award will provide funding for students for up to four consecutive years. Virgin Islands Lottery reps remind us that the hurricane season is here and what better way to get the information across. The latest hurricane preparedness ticket feature tips to ensure that you are ready. With that in mind, here are the winning numbers from today's drawing. The VI Lottery presents draw results of today's drawing on News 2. Fifth prize for $20,000. 1107. 1107. Fourth prize for $30,000. 5143. 5143. Third prize for $40,000. 20330. 20330. Second prize for $65,000. 8962. 8962. And the winning ticket number for the grand prize for $175,000 is 12215. 12215. If your ticket number wasn't called, keep trying. One of these days, your number could win. The next drawing is August 25th. Play the VI Lottery and imagine the possibilities. Good luck as you check those tickets. Stick around. Your news to Accuweather the forecast comes your way next.
As we check out the Virgin Islands for tonight, things are going to be rather quiet. However, we do have a tropical wave that's pressing on into our south, and that's causing for some cloud cover and a better chance for some active weather throughout the overnight hours. Now, in the Virgin Islands and the northern Leeward Islands, a lot of the wet weather is going to be pretty hit or miss. It's a mainly clear night, overnight low at 81 degrees. Then as we check in for tomorrow, mostly sunny. So behind this tropical wave, a nice dry patch of air moving in and our daytime high sits right around 91 degrees. Pretty similar setup in St. Thomas. Plenty of bright sunshine. If you have any upcoming outdoor plans or if you're vacationing in the region, it's going to be staying rather quiet, at least for now. Also in St. Croix, our daytime high at 90 with mostly sunny conditions. As we take a look at our marine forecast, the Atlantic facing beaches, our waves are still between 2 to 4 feet. No advisories in effect. Winds out of the east between 10 to 15 knots. For the Caribbean facing side. Our waves here also found between 2 to 4 feet. Winds out of the east coming in at 10 to 15 knots as well. So pretty similar conditions compared to the past couple of days. Our extended forecast shows another tropical wave coming in on Saturday and into Saturday night. So that's really when we're expected to deal with some additional showers and thunderstorms. Our daytime high at 90. And Saturday, again, I don't want to make it sound like it's going to be a complete washout, but we will have a better chance chance to deal with some wet weather. Mostly sunny skies coming in for the end of the weekend on Sunday and that'll stick around into the early half of the week. Our daytime highs will hang out in the lower 90s and our overnight lows stay right around 82 degrees. Sandy, back to you. Thank you, Molly. Time for our new Sioux weather picture there by Kidani Camacho, nine years of age of Lockhart Elementary School, definitely enjoying the summer outdoors. It's looking good so far, just like that. And uh, it's going to be clear and sunny for now, according to Molly, and a wave in our area, so we may get some wet weather going into the weekend. Kidani, hope you're enjoying your summer. Send us your news to weather picture too. News 2, Innovative Business Center, 4611, 22 Park Street, 300, St. Thomas VI, 00802. Stick around. News to Sports comes your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. As we near the halfway point in the 2016 Summer Olympic Games, there is continued excitement as records are being broken, new heroes arise, and surprises are around every corner. St. Thomas-born Darrell Homer took home the silver medal for the USA in the men's saber. Homer, who left the VI when he was five to live with his mother in the Bronx, took on Iranian Motaba Abdini in the semis and won 15 to 14 to advance to the gold medal match. There he fell 15 to 8 to defending gold medalist Aaron Ziligi of Hungary. The 26 year old fencer ranked 10th in the world was one win shy of becoming the first American male of the modern era to win an individual fencing gold. Congratulations Daryl, can't wait to see you in Tokyo in 2020. Staying in Rio, USA Basketball got a scare from Team Australia. First quarter action and Carmelo with the three. Now the all-time leader in career points in the Olympics. Third quarter, tie score when Draymond Green hits the tough shot. In the fourth, it's Carmelo show. The three from the corner. Next, the pull-up three, which, which puts the USA up by eight. Melo would finish with nine threes, 31 points, as USA remains undefeated and takes on Serbia Friday night. From Brazil to the VI, St. Croix native Rodney Griffith is about to embark on the next phase of his life. The Educational Complex graduate leaves this week for the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff on an athletic scholarship. There he will join fellow Crucian Malik Smith on the Pine Bluff track team, establishing a firm VI track connection. Rodney is also a recipient of the Adams Mahabi Academic Scholarship and plans on studying computer science while at school. I asked him earlier this week about receiving the scholarship. I was honored. No. I was truly blessed also because, you know, that's a burden that's been lifted off of me. I'm gonna thank my mom, my family, friends, my coach, Mr. Smith, Keith, he put up a lot with me. I just want people to look at me as a prime example for the Virgin Islands so they can follow 
and expect better of the youths. Congrats, Rodney, and maybe we'll see you and Malik representing the VI in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. One last quick note. St. Thomas's Clayton Laurent Jr. squares off versus Tony Yoka of France in boxing's men's super heavy over 91 kilogram round of 16 on Saturday at 12 noon. You can stream it live at, at NBCOlympics.com. That's it for sports. Sandy, back to you. Thanks, Gary. And uh, be sure to tune in. We will hear from uh, Clayton Laurent on Friday as he prepares for that event on Saturday, as well as Laverne Jones. That is all for this edition of News 2. We'd like to thank you for joining us for all the latest in news, weather, and sports. I'm Sandra Gumansing. We'll see you next time.